welcome to another edition of the Nightly Nuge. And Ted, you said something yesterday, um, which used to be the way the world was. The best at fill in the blank is the one that was hired or the one that was uh, on the stage or on the field or on the track or whatever it might be. Um, we know that President Biden said he has the most inclusive cabinet and staff of any other president. By inclusive, he means race and religion and gender or gender confused. And so, as you know, I'm a practicing lawyer. The American Bar Association decided last week that the test that is used to get into law school, which it's been proven is a direct correlation on someone's ability to learn the field of law and then ultimately pass a state bar exam, thwarts the inclusion of some ethnicities and genders and non gendered or gender confused individuals. So we're gonna throw the test out, Ted. So now anybody and everybody without testing gets to come in and become a lawyer. And you know, that's all fun and games, except for the poor bash at the end of the day that needs help of an attorney, doesn't know any better. It's kind of like when you go down to get your car fixed, you kind of like to see the certificate on the wall that said, Brakes certified, so you know your brakes have a reasonable chance of being fixed. I don't understand it, Ted. When I look at the sports fields, there's no big clamor for um, race equality on football fields. The best guy runs the ball. The best guy throws it. The best guy tackles. I thought that's the way it was in the music business. You hire the best drummers. Your Ted Nugent had number one hits and sold a bazillion albums because you're talented. I mean, what in the world is going on when anybody now can be anything without actually being able to do it just because you're a color, you're a race, you're a religion, or you're a confused some that don't know where you fit in the world, but we're going to include you because you don't know. How, how in the world, Ted, can you justify what the American Bar Association is doing, along with all the other people that are doing The very concept of diversity is bigoted and, and racist and prejudiced, because it's supposed to be about content of character, not the color of the skin or gender identity. It's supposed to be about, if you want to be a fireman, can you take this hose, climb that ladder, and put out the fire? That's all that matters. If you want to play the incredible music that Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Little Richard, the Motown Funk Brothers, James Brown taught me, you got to get in here and groove like an animal breeding czar of grind. And I don't give a damn what you wear under your pants. I don't care what color you are or what proclivities you might have or what your diet is. I want to know, are you the best at what you do? Are you qualified? Are you putting your heart and soul into being the best that you can be? The United States government has abandoned the pursuit of excellence, and now they're looking for the racism, the prejudice, and the bigotry of inclusiveness and diversity. Inclusiveness and diversity is pure rot. It's cultural suicide, and I laugh in their face. That's my take on it. I want to raise one other topic with you, Ted. I saw the Supreme Court is uh, taking up this school choice issue. Um, some municipalities and cities are actually giving taxpayers the ability to put their money towards um, their own kids' education. <laughs> However, if you choose a religious-based education, you can't use the money as a practicing Catholic. And I know um, you were raised Catholic and I believe Shemaine is Catholic. Um, that's offensive to me. And if we're going to allow people to take their, all my kids went to Catholic school, K, K through 12. I mean, so if we're going to allow taxpayers to use their own money to educate their kids, how can you justify saying if it's religious based, you can't go there. That seems, well, that almost seems like pre-planned. 
Well, Keith, welcome to the uh, inescapable broken record redundancy engineered. Uh, what do they call that? Uh, obsolescence. <laughs> you can't explain it. Don't try to explain this. Our government is the enemy of freedom. Our government is the enemy of choice. Our government is the enemy of of being the best that you can be. Our government is maniacally pursuing mediocrity and the abandonment of faith. If you're faithful and you believe in God, Uncle Sam doesn't like you anymore. And a lot of people are going, wait a minute, Uncle Sam is my country. No, it used to be. No, it's not. Uncle Sam is a pervert. Uncle Sam is Barack Obama and his boyfriend, Mike. Uncle Sam is Joe Biden and his son, Hunter. Uncle Sam is now Hillary Clinton and Jeffrey Epstein. Uncle Sam is a pervert. Uncle Sam is a drag queen. And you know why I'm really pissed off? Because truth, logic, and common sense is the wind beneath my American life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness wings. And I spend time every week, Keith, with heroes of the U.S. military who drag their blood brothers off the battlefield in pieces for this. They are so pissed off. They are so heartbroken. They are so let down that the country they fought for has turned into a drag queen cesspool of pure rot and engineered recidivism and celebrating violent criminals while punishing good American families. You don't need my take on that. Everybody sees this except maybe Sebastian Bach, who wants to ban all the, all the duck hunting rifles and shotguns. Uh, I, I, I'm sure somebody hunts ducks with a rifle up there in Canada. You, We, we could just never stop ever on the nightly news and never run out of bizarre, illogical, anti-science, anti-sense, anti-reason, anti-truth, insanity. And Uncle Sam is at the helm of the bad ship suicide. And we need to get this right. And once again, I'm, I'm not condemning the enemy. I'm condemning my own fellow Americans who don't vote. I'm condemning my own fellow Americans who don't even know who their chief of police is, who their sheriff is, who their state trooper commander is. They never talk to their mayor or senator or congressman. Or the governor. They're not experimenting in self-government. I would recommend if you don't experiment in self-government, go down to Key West and start swimming south because you're living like a Cuban in Cuba. Why don't you just go ahead and go there? And here's your national anthem. Bah. Meh, meh. Shame on you. The real curse in America is apathy and people guilty of apathy are the devil's sidekick. Case closed. You know what, Ted? We get tons of emails in here to the nightly news. And I just want you to know that these people that are watching and listening to you, they appreciate this forceful, common sense approach to the just the terrible times we're living in. And me personally, who gets to share these with you every single day, Ted. I mean, it's refreshing to know that there are some people like you that aren't only willing to go to the bridge at Concord. You're willing to be the guy in the front lines, put your name, put your reputation, really put your life, because I know you get death threats right on the line. And on behalf of all of the listeners who send this positive thought love emails to you. I just want to say thank you, Ted. And I feel that, remember, I'm on the streets of this great country every day. I just got a wonderful award from the number one president in the history of our country, the great president Donald Trump and his wonderful assistant, Martha, where Shemaine and my son Toby and I played the Star Spangled Banner for thousands of patriots at a, at a Mar-a-Lago event. So I know that what I represent isn't a hunch it's not a guess. I don't have opinions about truth, logic, and common sense. And so I want to thank everybody who stands up because those guilty of apathy, they know who they are. But those guilty of experimenting in self-government, they also know who they are. So believe me, I know that it's appreciated. Thank you, everybody out there for supporting the Nightly Nuge, certainly the Ted Nuge and Spirit of the Wild TV show, 34 years going to the Pursuit Network here in January. Certainly the Ted Nuge Real America Voice Spirit Campfire, our camp for kids. So I know that there is a positive, positive, patriotic truth, logic, and common sense army of great Americans out there. And I love you, but you've got to prod everybody else in your life that is not engaged to get cracking. And I'm going to make it real simple. Just join us at hunternation.org 
or the other nonprofit, huntthevote.org. It's, a, it's where we circle the wagons of conservatives. And also, people have been asking me every day where they can get one of these beauties. Well, since Christmas is right around the corner, you can go to tednugent.com and you can see the communication that we have. But now is the time to raise that middle finger loud and proud. And when someone tells us to do something stupid like wearing a mask and getting an experimental shot, even though we can't sue them when we get sick from the shot, it's time to raise that middle finger of American defiance and make sure our heart and soul is, is felt by those who supposedly represent us. That's the real critical pivot we're at right now, Keith. So number one, thank to you and your family, because boy, the sacrifices you make every day to get the truth out there in spite of the anti-truth general media, the mainstream media, you're a warrior on the front lines, Keith. And I can't tell you how proud I am to stand shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart with you at the Concord Bridge of 2022 and beyond, because these are pivotal times, whether there's going to still be a constitutional republic or not. And it's up to we, the people, to make that difference. Thanks, Ted. Well, tomorrow night, we're going to put all of the current events behind us. And tomorrow night, we're going to talk about music. I want to hear how it went down at Mar Largo. And I also want to hear about the, uh, the fundraising event you did down there in Naples, Florida for the hurricane victims. So tomorrow night, when you come back, Ted will have a guitar in his lap. We're going to hear a little bit about what went on down at Marlargo and the fundraiser event right here tomorrow night on the Nightly News. See you then, Ted. 